every American male, female, and kid in this country just 200 years ago knew everything in this book and then some, right? It is what this country was founded on. So there's a little bit of patriotism and going back to our roots built into this. And I think it's important everybody remember that piece because we have come pretty fast, you know, in a very short period of time. And now everything is 100% digital and very little is analog, but it is the analog that is going to work for you no matter what happens on this planet, right? And so having a little bit of analog in your life, meaning you're doing stuff with your hands and you're doing it yourself, will only benefit you and it'll benefit you in more ways than you can imagine. But we are into this whole instant gratification type world where you know, I want that food delivered to my front doorstep. The pandemic has made us more lazy, more complacent, because it was all about how do I get everything I need through my phone and delivered to my door, which to me is ridiculous, right? I mean, it just seems so, it's so it's such a bizarre time we've, we've had the opportunity of living through. And that was one of the wake up calls. Like, no, people just that it was just a personal endeavor. Like, hey, no, you need to do it yourself. Stop relying on this whole like delivery system. Yeah. You know, I'm going con- to play devil's advocate for a second because yeah, sure. I believe in what you're saying and, and we'll dig into that. But um, you also kind of sound like the guy or the, or the, or the, or the girl who um, mourns the passing of cursive writing. You know, like like my in-laws bring up all the time that cursive writing is no longer taught in our school systems. And I go, well, that's cool. It's, it's a great skill to have. Yes, letter writing is a great skill as well. But how will that serve our children as they grow up in the digital age? It's, it makes more sense for them yeah. to learn how to type, or, right. you know, or how to spell or grammar or all of these things. So is there a certain amount of like just... You know, you're you're caught up in the romanticism of no, not be. at all. There's there's one word on the in the subtitle of this thing, right? Modern. So that's the key takeaway. I'm not saying throw your cell phones out. I'm just saying no. You can use all of your technology to actually be more self reliant. And I talk about it throughout the book. You know, it, you how to leverage your phone in a lot of other ways in order to help promote the self reliance piece. I'm saying cut out your 100% reliance. <laughs> like it's insane to, you know, every little thing that we do involves a phone. And, but if you want to create an air gap between you and the next virus, between you and the next supply chain issue, between you and all of these different, you know, crises we keep facing, you know, round after round the air gap is self-reliance, right? So that, oh, okay, that crazy world isn't touching me when it comes to my food or, oh, that crazy world isn't touching me when it comes to having to fix something in my house, right? Just create, you know, it doesn't have to be full on little house on the prairie. Um, I'm not saying that at all, nor would I live that lifestyle. That's, I mean, you know, it's no, let's implement a little bit here, a little bit there, Um, one, because I feel like once people do it, they'll go, Oh, I should have been doing this all along. This is great. Like having a window seal garden of basil that I can then pick it and put it into my meal right then and there. How cool is that? But they've forgotten how to do these little things that, you know, support the self-reliance piece that I'm pushing and you can have fun with it. And also it brings the families back together. Right now you got, you know, four and a half people sitting in a living room, all of them on their devices and not paying attention to the TV that's on, <laughs> which is crazy. The TV's on and everybody's sitting there staring at their phones. And, um, but, you know, these, these are projects that even families can kind of start doing together. And, you know, mom and dads can start raising their kids with a little bit of hands-on knowledge again, um, because that's I'm what gonna, I grew up I'm, with. I know, I know you grew up in Saudi Arabia and, um, and, and you've kind of been all over the place, but I'm, I yeah. want to push you a little bit more on this too, because again, it's, it's a really great guide. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot, but um, I've also dipped into these types of guys. Like I grew up in a household where I grew up in the city. And then when I was uh, 13 years old, we moved halfway between two little towns mm. on a 70 acre property and we hand built a stack log home. So 
We built yeah. our own home. You, you know, did. we got the cedar. I spent weeks stripping cedar logs that we cut into 16 inch pieces. <laughs> we mixed mortar the traditional way. We built a stack oh, wow. log home. And then I lived in this in this house that was uh, that was only heated through radiant heating, underground radiant heating that was this uh, wood burning, huge wood burning thing that we would load twice a day. Uh, and so it was like two hours a day of yeah. pulling out the uh, the ash, loading it up. Uh, you know, hardwood was always better, you know, cutting everything. We would like, we lived this way and I did that for two or three years. Um, and so maybe I'm a little bit PTSD about it, but you spend <laughs> yeah. so much time, so much time and effort trying to live this way that the entrepreneur side of me goes, who has time for this? So, so I love that we could yeah, yeah. do this. We could yeah. do this, but, but still why write this guide? Why write this book? What are you, what, like, what, why is your heart into this? Well, because no one had a backup plan. No one had anything uh, when, when the pandemic occurred. And that's so really, really when goes, shit goes down, when it really goes bad and, I think people are embracing more of the, oh, I got to do it myself. I think it's slowly starting to kick in, right? That self-reliance piece is starting to become important again, not because it's going to be a primary lifestyle, but because I need to just know how to do this so that when things go bad, I can get through those bad moments without having to rely on other people that aren't, that are not going to be there for you. Right. That's really what it boiled down to. I mean, so you know, you brought up be your own power grid or be your own heating source, right? That's those chapters aren't about, hey, do this as a primary thing. It's more like, no, just think about it for a second. A $5,000 generator hooked up to your panel that's out in the garage can go a long way the next time the power goes out, especially here in Texas, where the grid failed catastrophically just one winter ago. And you had people dying and freezing to death, which is crazy in Texas, right? I mean, just, you know, people think of it as just hot all the time here, but it isn't. And so, you know, have that backup plan and that backup plan should be built on the foundation of self-reliance, not the backup plan of, I'm just going to go ahead and have an Amazon account and Netflix, just in case one of those go down. I've still got movies yeah. to watch. If you're ready to live a more rugged life, what does that mean? less reliance on other people, more control, more freedom, and honestly, becoming a bit of a badass. Click on the link right over there to hear the full conversation that I had with Clint Emerson.